Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox, you're watching the show of the week. I'm Mike. That's weird. Jane's not normally late. I wonder if this note explains what's going on. Dear Mike, due to the competitive nature of making YouTube videos, I have decided that from now on, show of the week will be a battle royale to the death. In this bag, you will find some rations, a map of the studio, and a randomly selected weapon. Yeah, good luck with that. The battle royale starts now. Also, this letter is coated in contact poison and I set a bunch of panthers loose. Good luck. Well, that was a long few days, but I think we all came out of it pretty well. Do you? Yeah, you didn't even die. Yeah, it's a good job I had that frying pan. I was able to make omelettes for the Panthers, win their trust. Didn't ask for your life story, Mike. Anyway, it wasn't even strictly necessary. We could have just waited until Player Unknown's Battlegrounds came out on Xbox One. Huh. <laughs> so Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, yes. to give it its full name, mm -hmm. or P-U-B-G, PUBG, as you'll see it written everywhere <laughs> else. Is that the correct pronunciation? I don't know. I like PUBG, PUBG. though, because it includes pub. And G, uh, yeah. Okay. My yeah. two favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so um, what is it for the uninitiated? Because it's it's just a PC game. Uh, just a PC game. It is on PCs at the moment and it is coming to Xbox. Not just a PC game. One of the most popular PC games right. of the moment. Okay. Uh, they've sold three million copies of it on PC. Everyone's going completely nuts for it. It's huge on Twitch and streaming platforms. Basically, you've seen Battle Royale, as I can tell. Um, so. It's like that. You drop a bunch of players, 100 players, onto an island and then force them to kill each other. Okay. Uh, unlike Battle Royale, you don't get given a random weapon at the start. You have to scavenge for your own kit. Uh, but what's quite cool is it's not really focused on uh, long range stuff. So in a traditional kind of survival open world game, on a sort of eight by eight kilometer island. Are you saying I'd be picked off by a sniper? You would be I picked off by a sniper before you had on. a chance to, to yeah, even right. swing your frying pan. Right. Um, whereas this is more sort of close combat stuff, so there's kind of shotguns. <laughs> there are some guns that are decent at range, but mm -hmm. you have to be quite good. And also, you have to collect mod parts to improve them Ooh, at, at okay, range and things okay. like that. that so good. there's a lot of shooting, but there's a lot more hiding, basically. Right. Um, so you kind of scavenge for things in buildings, but it's it's an extremely tense experience. You're kind of cowering in the corner, trying to find a helmet to protect your precious melon. Yeah. Um, and uh, and essentially, it's it's extremely tense. And then there are moments where, as the, the game world kind of contracts, which is the key thing that drives right, people over together. Right, over time, yeah. it, it, the map gets smaller and smaller. How does right. it get smaller? Like, what, what so happens to it? What happens is, at the start, it's completely open. Yeah, um, it's like a big island, Yeah, right? exactly. There's, yeah. there's a number of maps, but mm -hmm. not that many. Well, there's only one at the moment oh, on the PC right, thing, okay. but there are some on the way. Right. Um, so what happens is, after a certain time, a play space, so a circle, is marked ah, on the map. Okay. And it tells you that the game is going to contract into that circle uh -huh. after a certain amount of time. Okay. So what happens is, if you're miles away from that circle, you need to start sprinting across the landscape. Right. Um, um, and kind of cut out the, the scavenging and just right. get to the, the sort of place. Do you space. get exploded or something if you're You start to take damage, zone. basically, ah, yeah. Ah, okay. So it's a little bit like Battle Royale with yeah. the shotgun collar or whatever they had. Yeah. I can't even remember now. It, the, yeah, the exploding collars, yep. basically. Uh, yes, and same as, as sort of the Hunger Games where certain areas of the map get, uh, you know, become like lethal. Okay, it's exactly okay. the same concept. And what nice. it does is just drives those 100 players together yep. until right at the end you're sort of in a tiny circle with okay. maybe six or seven other people Amazing. and forced into a firefight. So I had a game this morning where I was cowering behind a sort of Land Rover and mm -hmm. the circle was almost entirely around my Land Rover and there were ah. seven players in that You space. were in the passenger seat, yeah. the other guy was in the driver's seat, someone was in the back. Well, I was, te yeah, I was tempted yeah. to get in and start sort of doing donuts and see if I could hit someone, yeah. but it didn't happen. Oh. But it's, it's quite tense because, yeah, that, that sort of area that damages you. I had a really cunning strategy in one game I was playing where I was hiding in a barn and I was just inside the zone, so that seemed like a pretty good place to be. Yeah. Unfortunately, the uh, threshold of the play space ended up sort of cutting off the en exit of the, um, oh, the no. barn. So oh. when I had to get out to move to the you next to one, I had to go the into the damaging bit. Zone. And, yeah, oh, took a load of uh, health hits and stuff. So, so yeah, it really forces people together. It's a really clever mechanic yeah. um, that, that whittles down that 100 players quite organically because yeah. as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, yeah. some people die outside the play space and the players are forced together. It's really, really smart. That's cool, 100 players, that's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, and, and it performs really well. How, how long does a match last, typically? I'd say maybe like 20 minutes, it depends. Okay. You can get killed almost immediately, oh, obviously, sure. if you're not very good. Bet. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it sort of lasts about 20 minutes and it's kind of really nicely paced to mm. kind of 
you know, at the, the play space gets smaller and smaller at a more rapid rate. So uh -huh. at the start, it's, you know, you get a good sort of five minutes to kind of look around for weapons and things like that. Then it starts going up to two minutes, 30 seconds. And then it's like, okay, in a minute, the play space. Mm, okay. So the, it ratchets up the tension in a really, really smart way. It's a way. really cool concept. Like, I mm. haven't played it. I've watched our friends at Eurogamer video mm. uh, playing it. And I can see why it's so popular. Yeah, it's a yeah. really neat idea. Seems a little bit less grueling than, I don't know, DayZ, for yeah. example, the other sort of big open world mm. survival PC game. And actually it's pretty different, you know, in many respects. Yeah, I think the key, the key thing is just that that forcing the players together, which doesn't really happen in DayZ. So mm. you can spend hours not really running across anyone. Whereas playing a, a round of Battlegrounds, yeah. you are going to meet someone and either you're going to kill them or they're going to kill you. Um. Um, stressful. Yeah, it I is completely stressful. <laughs> the amount of times I've just hid in a building and yeah. just waited just in case someone comes up the stairs. Can you hide it really effectively? Could you just like get under, a, well not get under a bed, but you know, yeah. hide somewhere until the game's almost over? I mean, you can kind of sort of fortify yourself in clean like upstairs rooms and things like that. But obviously, if the play space moves somewhere else, yeah. then your hiding no, place good. is immediately useless. Does so. it always hone in on the same sort of central no, place? No, it moves to different places oh, all around. Okay. So it could be an entirely open space where yeah. you're completely without cover, like okay. I was hiding behind that Land Rover. Right. Or it could, you know, centre on a, a town which has several buildings in it. Yeah. And at the very last bit, you know, the players could all be in those buildings. Mm, so. neat. It's a very clean concept and my only worry for the game is that because it's still sort of early access and it will be early access when it arrives on Xbox One at the mm. end of the year, um, my worry is that they'll sort of overcomplicate it and because what's great about it is at the moment it is one mode and one map. Yeah. So it's sort of very clean, you know what you're doing, you know the scavenging is very sort of um, straightforward to understand, you understand the items you're getting. My worry is that it might become sort of overcomplicated when actually it's the elegance of the idea that's... Mm, that's feature creep. Really. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Ah, okay. But I'm really looking forward to it. They've announced a desert map that's coming that looks really, really cool. Mm. And it's a very different sort of, you know, the... the um, like an urban desert map or just like a Tatooine uh, desert? No, not, not like a... Yeah, it's more like a sort of American kind of dust bowl oh, sort, I see, of, I see. sort of area. Okay. There's, there's all these kind of settlements and things. Yeah. And, and sort of, but open sounds, spaces are part good. of it as well. Yeah, yeah. Because, if, you know, eventually you're going to find yourself running across an open field yeah. to get to the play space. Or driving. Yeah, or driving. Or driving. Vehicles look really fun. I saw the yeah. Eurogamer video guys and they were like all hanging out of a, a Jeep. Yeah, yeah. That was that was cool. It's a lot easier to win when you're playing as a team, so yeah. there's the option to play as like a duo. Yeah, uh, and or that a four-player team. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's a it's a lot easier to win like that. Um, playing it on your own is you are entirely on your own and it's mm. it's quite challenging. Mm. Um, the other thing I really love about it is the the way you get into the map is there's just a, a sort of troop transport plane flies across the map yeah. and after a certain point you can bail out whenever you like so you see all the kind of players falling out of the plane ah. and you get to choose from the sky yeah. where you kind of want to land and it's a risk reward thing you know do you go for a big settlement where there might be a bunch of weapons or do you go for somewhere a little more quiet where there's going to be fewer players dropping in okay yeah i saw johnny faves the quarry yeah is that a favorite drop zone maybe? i think i think uh, anywhere that that is has a few buildings and has you know some good sort of cover for scavenging is a good, is a good and, place and to be such yeah. like yeah. Yeah, okay okay the odds are really stacked against you it feels like that but actually i've i found myself i'm not very good i must put that out there i'm just not very good at, at games in general but i have found myself in the sort of top 10 okay. and top five quite regularly because i think with with 100 players, the diversity of skill levels is so massive that you yeah, end up I'm with some really, really good... Yeah, but I'm always at the lower end of that, like, curve. You never <laughs> the know, because there's an element of luck as well. You yeah, know, you true, can land true. on one like... side of the island and the play space can be on the other side. Mm. And you're, unless you find a vehicle, you're yeah, toast. If I land on a mountain of guns and grenades... Exactly, you'll be fine. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you too could win at... at you just have to find a lucky grenade battles. mountain yeah. and then I'll be a surefire winner. <laughs> Okay, cool. So it's and gonna be really cool seeing it on Xbox. Okay. I think you know, it, as a as a sort of console exclusive, which is what it is. It's yeah. a bit of a coup, really, because it is the current. It's a big game. deal. I know that much. Mm. And it's coming out on the game preview program on yes. Xbox One later this year, yes. before the end of the year. Correct. And that is the the preview program, sort of the beta style. Yeah. Stuff like the Long Dark scheme. came out on there. Elite yeah. Came out on there. But then like it will come out properly next year. Yes, 2018. And there's gonna be an Xbox One X. Like enhanced version. Yes, they've they've confirmed that for the for the full release, so right, in 2018. Right. So I'm not sure if it'll arrive right as it lands on Xbox yeah. uh, Game Preview. Yeah. But 
But for, at the very least, you will be able to, on your Xbox, play this really, really sort of awesome multiplayer game. It performs really well as well. Like, I would expect 100 players on an island to be, like, laggy as hell. Actually, it's, it's really, really good. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's, like, quite technically demanding, mm. like, 100-player server, you know, setup. Yeah, they've nailed um, it. Well, they've nailed it on PCs. That's true. What do you think of its chances on, on an Xbox One? I Not suspect it's within Microsoft's interest to make sure it works properly, so yeah. they'll be offering support probably in servers. You would things, hope, so. absolutely. Because we've had you know games that have arrived on um, you know indie multiplayer games like Friday the 13th and Dead by Daylight mm -hmm. have arrived with server problems because they're a kind of peer-to-peer -peer mm -hmm. thing. Oh yeah. I'm not sure exactly how Player Unknown Battlegrounds works in terms of servers and stuff, but it seems to perform pretty well on PC, and I suspect Microsoft want it to be a sort of definitive experience. You would assume dedicated servers. Yeah, you like, hope so. Yeah, yeah, not just one player decides they, get, they get bored, turn yeah. off their, their Xbox. Yeah. And like, sorry everyone, sorry I, 100 people. I think it has to be dedicated yeah. servers just for the amount of There players. must be something like mm. that going to happen. And it looks, I mean technically also, it looks kind of nice. Yeah, it's like, quite I pretty. expected yeah. it to look fairly basic just yeah. because it, it, it's so ambitious in every other respect. Mm. But yeah, it looks quite nice actually. It's Unreal Engine 4 and they make pretty good use of it. Um, you know, there's good lighting and kind of sunsets and things mm. like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it seems like a really nice balance of sort of performance and, and graphics. My PC isn't like insanely powerful, but it runs it pretty well. Um, so yeah, and there's all sorts of weird customization options and things like that. A lot of people run around in their pants. I saw, I, I thought that was part of the game. because I was like, Mike, I'm watching <laughs> this video of PUBG. PUBG. And why is everyone in their pants? Is that a thing? That's just like, people, Jim. That's just that's people. Because I was I like, like, oh, I see you get dropped in semi-nude <laughs> and then you have to find trousers <laughs> is your you first You can scavenge trousers thing. if you want. Right, so you um, can choose to go in in your boxes. And then come out wearing then, a full ensemble. Right, so, yeah. so it's a bit like a show-off thing, like a... Like yeah. an alpha move, like yeah. I if can you survive win, in just my boxes. Wearing just boxes. Because there are, you know, having a police vest or whatever gives you extra sort of damage. Right, right. Um, uh, consumption. Um, you parachute in and just like hot in your pants, print yeah. boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, if only they do. Oh, they should really do a proper line of underwear. Because at the moment it's just some grubby Y fronts, which is mm -hmm. obviously pretty comedy, but yeah. uh, I would love a full selection of underwear. <laughs> Well, there we go, <laughs> day one. Just ignoring the 12 gauge shotgun and rooting through the drawers for a new pair of boxes. Ah, uh, okay. All right, well, I'm looking forward to that. Sold? Yeah, I am actually. I think it will be hilarious mm. for Let's Plays. Yes, it um, is. So I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to never ever getting a. Oh, it's if you win, it says. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, yes. right? Yeah, okay. I've never, I've never had the chicken dinner. Winner, winner, Fair chicken play. dinner. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh man! I can only assume it's, yeah. uh, it's uh, delicious. delicious. I assume <laughs> sounds delicious. Yeah. I'm sort of hungry now. Um, okay. I nice. think yeah, that's one of the weird affectations that kind of belies its sort of. Uh, pre previous life as a mod because this player unknown guy yes. was like a modder and created something and he's like, like now, this and now he's made an insanely yeah. popular version. Well, he would make mods of this kind of yes. thing for various games, mm. and then he's like, well, I'm going to do a standalone one. But yeah, it gives it that sort of personality, the yeah. winner winner chicken dinner thing, which is not very cod like. Yeah, or battlefield. I don't -like know that that's or a, anything like. Yeah. Is that a phrase in the states? Is that it's American an Americanism? Thing? It's okay, an Americanism. Yeah. 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 Um, Guy Fieri and says he says it. Guy well, Fieri says it. There you but go. I've heard other people say it as well. It's <laughs> very much an Americanism. Mm. So yeah, winner winner chicken dinner. How do you get on in the outside Xbox Battle Royale? Well, my backpack kit actually contained a bunch of grenades. Oh, good. No pins though, so they pretty much all went off at once. Oh, bad. But no one could reach me in the crater I blew myself into, so I was actually fine. Oh, good. Yeah, shame I didn't win though, I really fancied that chicken dinner. Because that's your reward when you win a round of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, a chicken dinner that I'm really hoping isn't metaphorical. If I eventually manage to win a round and it does turn out to be just a figure of speech rather than a piping hot meal, at least I'll have these delicious chicken dinners from other video games to fall back on. Say what you like about the Mad Gear Gang and their reign of terror across Metro City and Final Fight, somewhere in their midst there's clearly a talented sous chef just waiting for his big break so he can give up his life of crime. How else do you explain the fact that as you punch, kick and pile drive your way through a small army of troubled teens, you keep coming across beautifully prepared chickens roasted to perfection, just lying around on the floor? Perhaps our mystery cook is trying to topple the gang from the inside by providing Cody, Guy and Hagar with nutritious, protein-rich meals throughout their mission to punch the underclasses in the face. Of course, there's always the possibility they're using their culinary expertise to try to kill us with deadly floor germs. The only way to find out is to definitely eat that delicious chicken right off the floor. Anyone dead? Not me! Knocked.
Noctis tired count? Road tripping around the place on a quest with your bros is hungry business, so it's good that Noctis brought his pal Ignis along who is a bit handy with a frying pan. I've come up with a new recipe. Among the most delicious looking dinners that Ignis whips up for Noct and the Funky Bunch is paella de pollo, a chicken and rice dish made from the leg of a chicatrice, which is a kind of terrifying giant battle chicken. <laughs> Ouch! Still, all worth it when we sit down to a delicious chicken paella, right guys? Although, I mean, we rode here on chocobos, docile, domesticated chicken-like animals. Anyone else thinking what I'm thinking? What the hell is wrong with you? All right, all right, suit yourself. <coughs> Getting a decent meal in the blocky world of Minecraft is harder than you'd think, and not just because your mouth is only four pixels wide. Your only option is to murder your own lunch, but kill a chicken and you'll just end up with raw chicken, which is a health and safety nightmare. Do you know how dangerous salmonella is? <laughs> What you need to do is set that chicken on fire, perhaps with a bucket of lava you have lying around, and then when it dies, out pops delicious cooked chicken. You might think this is a primitive way to get a hot meal, but do you know how hard it is to accurately measure the cooking time when the chicken is A, still alive, and B, running around at the center of a raging inferno? I'm like an 8-bit Gordon Ramsay over here. I suggest you go no further. Acadia is a nest of snakes. Beasts that subvert the will of Adam. You... I do know you're crazy, right? Fallout 4's Far Harbor expansion introduced a new foodstuff, chicken noodle soup. It's made from rad chickens, which are apparently irradiated chickens rather than just really cool ones on skateboards. You can knock up this dish at any of the cooking stations on the island by combining a chicken thigh, carrot, black blood leaf, and dirty water. It has to be dirty water for added flavor, I guess. And if you don't reckon this gravity-defying slop looks appetizing, just remember this is the post-apocalyptic wasteland and wanderers can't be choosers. Just be thankful it's not people noodle soup. Hmm, needs a dash more people. What a lucky pirate are ye! Me? You've struck gold, boy! I have? Gold, gold, gold! Ha <laughs> ha! Golden nuggets of chicken! Oh. What treasure trove of deep-fried fun! <laughs> Blondbeard's Chicken Shop from the Curse of Monkey Island is the finest restaurant in all of Puerto Pollo. It's also the only restaurant in Puerto Pollo, but don't hold that against it. Famous throughout Plunder Island for his chicken, slaw, and buttery biscuits, Blondbeard, owner, proprietor, and head chef of this establishment, is something of a wizard with poultry, if his inventive creations are anything to go by. Me crispy bounty of breaded beaks! There'd be nothing like the hearty crunch from these pan-fried jewels. Sounds... good? How's the Ipecac slaw? Not bad, but 15 minutes later, you'd be hungry again. Okay, less good. There'll be a heapin' glob of lard I keep in the back for special occasions. Yeah, maybe I'll just have a biscuit. Whoa! This biscuit is full of maggots! Aye! Ha ha ha! That's me special ingredient! That's just the right amount of exotic flavor. Thinking about it, it might be off chicken for a while. Now it's time to see what's written in the comments and in the long number on the front of Mike's credit card, followed by the three-digit security code on the back. 162747... Hey! It was worth a shot. Instead of defrauding Mike, let's look at the comments on last week's show about Dead by Daylight and the eldritch abominations you definitely don't want to end up working for. Because it turns out, Mike, there's room for at least two asymmetrical multiplayer survival horror games on the block, which is exactly the sort of block you don't want to walk past late at night. Commenter Corey Nydam spots the similarity and says, An asymmetrical multiplayer horror game. Isn't that what Jane would call a normal day at the office? We were negotiating for symmetrical horror game. No dice. Nuh -uh. Dead by Daylight, out now on Xbox One, PC and PS4, has a format similar to Friday the 13th, in that one player is a powerful supernatural serial killer, while four others are regular chumps trying to not get murdered. To this comparison, on the other hand, commenter Pentaduce says, Of course, let's just forget that Dead by Daylight came out months before Friday the 13th was made. We're not forgetting. Are we forgetting? No, we're just saying the games have elements in common. Right, and the show of the week the week before had been about Friday the 13th. Also, although Dead by Daylight did come out in June last year on PC, Friday the 13th came out on PC and consoles in May this year, slightly ahead of the console version of Dead by Daylight. 
Very informative, Mike. Thank you. You are welcome. If the killer manages to down a survivor, they can sling them over their shoulder and stick them on a conveniently placed sacrificial meat hook, at which point they're mere moments away from being carried off by some sort of trans-dimensional eldritch spider called the Entity. <laughs> About this detail of Dead by Daylight, commenter Andy McPee has a question. Is the entity connected only to meat hooks? Or is there a chance my coats will be sacrificed every time I hang it up? Interestingly, the entity is connected to all hooks everywhere. It just doesn't accept sacrifices from them because it prefers humans to coats and fish. Thanks for a great question. Moving along, here are your comments on this video in which we played asymmetrical multiplayer survival horror game Friday the 13th and sacrificed Andy a lot. Hey! Jason's coming. Yeah, Andy! I noticed. He grabbed I'm me. I'm coming through the window. <laughs> don't, no, don't come in here. Ah, he's behind you. Andy, I know. dive out the window. Run, Andy, I run. Can't. Let's go ah. out through this window. Why is no one helping no. me? Andy got got. Oh, sorry, Jason. Commenter Riley Danvers saw this coming, saying, Jane leading Jason to Andy and watch as he gets killed. I'm honestly not even surprised. I was a bit surprised. The first time. Right, just then. All right, well, get, okay, okay, scatter, scatter. I can't scatter. Yeah, you thought you could vault over that, didn't you? Whee! But you can't. Ah, ah, ah she's so ah. slippery. Commenter Daniel Edwards knows that feel, saying, Jane, you thought you could vault over that, but you can't. That describes my entire life. After all, aren't we all being pursued by our own personal Jasons with life's unvaultable balconies in the way? Deep. Commenter Potato Productions, on the other hand, Mike, has some advice for you. It was kind of hard not to cringe at the fact that Mike said, in game chat, under the bed, yeah. Sucks to be you, Jason, when Jason was outside. Yeah. Sucks to be you, Jason. Uh oh. How was I supposed to know Jason could hear me? He's got ears, doesn't he? Does he? Mostly. Let's move on to the comments on this video about the forced stealth sections in games that made us want to eat our own hands off. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is one of those games that says, play me any way you like. Except this bit. This bit is stealth. The mission Elizabethan Rendezvous has you board a cargo ship looking for the ancient Ankaran sarcophagus, which is rumoured to contain an ancient vampire who can bring about the end of days. It is also an obligatory stealth section, which can be a bit of a problem if you put all of your character points into seduction, not sneakiness. Commenter Joe Mama is pleased. He says, Nice to see Oxbox hit their monthly quota for mentioning Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines just six days in. <laughs> I wish that fulfilled the VTMB quota. What's tomorrow's video? Seven vampirist vampires in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline. Oh, sweet, we can talk to that one. We're here today to vent about some of these stealth sections that boiled our blood in some of our favourite games. To this, commenter Zach Attack says, Some of these stealth sections that boiled our blood in some of our favourite games. Sees Colonial Marines and Assassin's Creed 3 on list. Thinks Jane has lost her mind. You were the one talking about Colonial Marines though, so I guess that means it's one of your favourite games. You take that back! Okay, okay, you calm down, and we'll see what commenter the X9X9X9 has to say. Uh, guys, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, two words, boat stealth. Uh, I think they prefer ship stealth. I think I prefer not having to do stealth in a massive boat. Alright, I'm gonna go check in with Jane, I'll catch you later. Oh, good luck. Uh, I've still got some grenades left, if you need them. Save me one for later. Okay. <laughs> that was close. That's it for show of the week. Thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, but before you go, wherever it is you go when you're not watching outside Xbox videos, register your interest for future Battles Royale by pressing the like button. And what happens? Then I'll be in touch. Not at all sinister. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, time for lunch. Uh, I've still got some rations left in my Battle Royale kit. Oh, I wouldn't drink that. That's poison. Poison, also, actually. Uh, you know what? Why don't you just leave the whole thing? Uh, let's go get some lunch. Oh, get your sandwich. <laughs>